little while ago, I made a video called Testing Out Gimmicky Guitar Gadgets, which quickly became my most viewed video of all time. Hoping to ride that momentum, I'm back today with Testing Out Gimmicky Guitar Gadgets, round two. Can we get as many views, comments, and likes on this video as the last one? I doubt it, but that ain't gonna stop me. Links to the products are in the description. Let's do this. To start things off, I've got a pack of 10 gauge DR electric guitar strings. But unlike these boring old silver ones, these are neon green. Let's see how they look. Well, they came as advertised. They are in fact guitar strings and they are in fact green. They look pretty cool, but I feel like with a little bit of a change in lighting, they could look really cool. At least I hope this looks cool. I bought these lights specifically for this. But anyways, looks are only 75% of playing guitar. Let's see how these green goblins sound. To summarize, if you have any upcoming gigs at a glow bowling alley, these are a must have. They come in a variety of colors. They're only a couple bucks more than normal strings. And I think they're pretty fun, even though realistically, I will never buy them again. Next up, we have what appears to be an Altoids box, a carrying device in which guitarists have historically stored their picks, their special smokes, and their Altoids. But this curiously strong mint receptacle is different because it is actually an amplifier. An amplifier that smells like peppermint. I introduce to you the Ampoids, a small little pocket amplifier powered by a nine volt battery that is conveniently manufactured in an Altoids tin. What's not to love about this cute little thing? It's incredibly simple. In fact, the only thing you can do is plug in and start rocking. I don't know about you, but I would say that it sounds rather tinny. Let me tell you the perfect situation for this thing. Get your bass player to run a patch cable through his shirt sleeve so that it can't be seen. The cable plugs into the ampoids. You're standing behind him with your guitar plugged into the other end. Bass player offers drummer a mint. He obviously accepts because he probably hasn't brushed his teeth for a while. Bass player opens box. You blast a power cord. Stupid drummer, you just got pranked. Moving on, we have the Plectone Double Pick, which is two guitar picks held together and separated by this gummy Jolly Rancher looking thing. The idea here is that when you strum your guitar, each pick will hit the strings twice, mimicking the sound of a 12 string. I am getting flashbacks to the Jellyfish Pick, which I reviewed in the last video, and if you recall, I was not a fan. It belongs in the garbage and I passionately dislike it, but I'm gonna keep an open mind. My first thoughts are, this thing seems pretty well built and the middle gummy thing looks pretty tasty. I badly want to bite into it, but I'm an adult and I have self-control. Let's see how it sounds. If you're choosing between a 12 string and the plectone, go with the 12 string. However, I don't hate it at all. It has a unique sound and I could see myself using it. And if nothing else, this gummy middle thing is a delight to squeeze. It could act as a great stress reliever next time your drummer goes missing right before the second set. And the burning question I'm sure you all have, does it sound like a 24 string if you strum a 12 string with this? It does not. Moving on, we have the Gizmotron. This device is designed to give you a violinish bow type sound on your guitar. It does this by spinning little rubber wheels really fast over top of the strings. You press down on these different buttons to engage the mechanism, different buttons for different strings. I've already got it plugged in. All I need to do is switch it on. It's a bit noisy. Let's see what kind of sounds I can get with it.
So with quite a bit of practice, that's the best I could get at sounding. It's definitely fun to mess around with and it gets you within the realm of a bow sound. But I've got some issues with it. It takes quite a lot of tweaking to get set up. I spent about an hour on this thing last night and I still feel like I'm fighting with it. My biggest issue though is the price tag. These things retail for $300. I got mine on Black Friday for half price and even then it seems like a bit much. Moving on, we've got the Soundbrenner Pulse Metronome, which is probably the most futuristic metronome on the market. Instead of playing a sound like every other metronome known to exist, it creates a steady pulse with a literal pulse. To wake it up, I give it a twist, hold two fingers on it, tap out my rhythm, and it starts vibrating in time. I can change the tempo by twisting this thing, and there's also an app that controls all the features. It comes with a wrist strap so you can wear it like a watch, and it also comes with a wrist strap if you are a giant. It's definitely very unique. I want you to experience this too, so I'm gonna put it on the camera. Kinda cool, isn't it? Okay, so right away I can tell that it's well made. It's like an Apple product in the sense that everything about it feels good. I don't know that it'll replace a traditional metronome. Anytime I have it on, it kinda feels like I have an extra heartbeat, which I could see being a little bit bothersome at times, but I mean, the same could be said about the beep of a normal metronome. And I think an added benefit of a traditional metronome is it forces you to listen to an external sound source so that you don't get tunnel hearing on your own playing. What I do think would be amazing is if your whole band had them on for a gig or a practice, I personally hate hearing a click in the monitors. This thing solves that. As far as I can tell, you can get multiple synced up using the app with a bunch of pre-selected tempos. I probably wouldn't wear it as a watch on stage because I feel like you'd look like a bit of a dweeb, but I'd be totally on board having it concealed somewhere else. Okay. I've saved the best for last. This final gimmicky guitar gadget is by far the thing that I'm the most excited about, the Talent Booster by Zombie Box Pedals. Most of us try to sound better by buying expensive gear, wasting time practicing, and throwing money at guitar teachers, when in reality, all you need is a Talent Booster pedal. Let me demonstrate how this musical godsend works. Here is something that is objectively horrible sounding. <laughs> Now, I will switch on my talent booster and listen to this. Hang on a second, I believe I put the cables in backwards. Okay, I've got an update. Right here on the back it says, product will not affect tone at all. Product will not improve your playing. Use nine volt battery only. It would seem I've been duped into buying the guitar version of a pet rock. My thoughts? Well, at least it's truly true bypass. That wraps it up for testing out gimmicky guitar gadgets round two. If you like this video, hit that like button and let me know in the comments. And if you've been eyeing out my traditional guitar playing samurai shirt, then you, my friend, have good taste. They're available at www.shopsamuraiguitars.com in a variety of styles and colors, and they ship all around the world. Thank you all for watching and an extra big shout out to everyone who supports my channel through Patreon. If you missed the first installment in this series and you want to get caught up, hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for regular guitar content. Until next time, I'm Samurai Guitarist and I will see you again soon.